Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Passive Money. Kirby here, Alex over there. Uh, today, we're talking about the American dream, the American dream that everybody shoots for, the American dream that everybody um, strives to achieve, the American dream that people have, you know, jumped borders, swam oceans to get here to seek out. With that being said, Alex, what is your thoughts on the American dream? I think it's a lie um, because I think the American dream that they show in propaganda or that they talk about is a lie. Um, right. And, you know, we're going to be talking about this topic here or this uh, tweet. Um, all these things that you see are what they talk about being an American dream. You know, you get a college degree, you get a brand new car, you get a brand new house, you meet someone, you get married with them, you take out debt for a wedding because for whatever reason, the wedding has to be over five figures. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, you marry this person and then now you have all this debt and you may not see all that debt paid off until your 60s, 70s if it's even paid off and you didn't decide to keep refinancing or keep buying a brand new car. So that's the American dream that people always talk about, you know, Oh, he's got a college degree. He's got his own house. He's got a wife and they have a brand new car, but like no one sees what's behind the scenes on that. No one sees the, you know, their bank accounts or the debt that they're underwater in. So this one is especially um, interesting to me because uh, a lot of these I was able to avoid, but I'll let you get into it more before I go on. Okay. Yeah. Um, the American dream is this joke. I mean, people, you know, like I said at the intro of this, you know, they do people from all over the world try to come here to achieve the American dream. Hell it's Americans that's been living in America forever and they can't achieve the, quote unquote American dream. And the reason why it's hard, well, it's not hard to achieve the American dream. It's hard to sustain it. But if you look at it, everything that you name, it costs. I mean, car payments right now, the average car payment is like $875 a month. Uh average mortgage right now is about $25 to $2,800 a month. And then you add on every other tidbit to that credit card debt, consumer debt, and college, you know, college debt. If if your goal, if the goal in life is just to have these things, the degree, the house, the car, the two and a half kids, the picket fence, the dog, you know, this thing that they promote that's the American dream, then you're screwed. Because now, once you get all of these things, you're going to spend the rest of your life paying for the re literally the rest of your life. I mean, there's people that 60, 70, and 80 years old right now that still got student loan debt. They literally pay for the rest of their life just so they can say, I had a car. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with buying a house, nothing wrong with having a car. There's nothing wrong with getting a degree. But to believe that the American dream is you have to sacrifice the rest of your time on earth just to get these three things. You're out of your, you're out of your damn mind. I mean, to it's a way, a way to achieve these things and not be in financial ruin the rest of your life or not be a slave to the job. And this is exactly how I see it. Everybody who sit there and buy the expensive car, buy the big house, you know, to impress everybody else, you guaranteed to be, well, damn near guaranteed to be an employee for the rest of your life. Most people in a job that they hate, they coming home every day complaining. But the reason why they're complaining is they have to be at a job that they hate because they're slave to the debt. They have to work to pay the debt. People ain't running and jumping and say, oh, work, I love work and all this. Not on a mass scale. The only reason why they're there at that suck ass job is because they have all these bills so they can say, I achieved the American dream. But they didn't achieve nothing. The only thing you did was achieve a, a bag of debt that you miserable about the rest of your life. 
but go ahead. I'll I want to get on my soapbox on this one because you know I'm ready to go off. <laughs> yeah, um, it's it's interesting because people really do believe. And one that caught my attention on this list is people believe that you do have to spend thirty thousand dollars on a wedding, or you know, I've heard insane. I've heard up to like sixty thousand. I mean, it, it's insane, and they're not. These people aren't millionaires, you know, they're average people thinking that they can, that it's a wise decision to spend that much money on a wedding. A wedding is literally just binding you and your wife. So anything above what's really necessary, I think it's just trying to show off to people. And me and Kirby probably have the the cheapest <laughs> weddings in the world. <laughs> Mine was a little yeah. more bougie compared to his, but I only spent $2,000. <laughs> But well, you know, yours is way yours is way more bougie, <laughs> way more bougie. So and so last night I'm uh at at a friend's house. His was cheaper than mine. He said I paid three dollars and fifty cents for mine at the courthouse. Three dollars and fifty cents. So it was thirty five years ago. Three dollars and fifty cents uh at the courthouse. But they've been married going on forty years. Yeah. And uh and I'm like yeah you know me. Yeah, Alex's wedding is bougie compared to mine. My 35 bucks military discount courthouse reception was Olive Garden. And then after that, I just sat at home with a uh we only had like two witnesses or whatever. But but then after that, after Olive Garden that I paid for, um then uh I just went home and sat on the couch and then watched some uh Smack DVD rap battles. Listen, that was <laughs> that was my wedding day. And hey, look, and here we are. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? <laughs> Still here. But I we didn't we didn't go, you know, in debt to make that happen. And then the thing is, you go, I mean, I see literally people maxing out credit cards, going heavily in debt, refining houses, doing whatever to make this one day event happen. Then they add that debt on to whatever what other debt the spouses bring the spouses are bringing in that they don't know about and then now they're working the rest of their life to pay off this one day event and then most of the time because finances is the number one reason for divorce these people get divorced and half of the half of the debt that's in the divorce is based off this wedding that they had yep. so so what is it what is it really worth I mean, it's I guess in this social media look at me world now. I mean, it's always been a look at me world, but now in the social media, people just up in the ante. They just up in the ante to just get more in debt, more in debt, more in debt, more in debt, just to say, look at me. Nah, I'm gonna keep my thirty five dollar. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's not necessary at all. It's I mean, a wedding like that. That's it's I can't understand it, but. Um, and you know, the other thing too is you know, student loans. I people won't ever follow this, but I just believe that if you want to go to college, then do what you can afford. You know, people take out like this shows eighty thousand dollars in student loans, but they have no means of income to actually cover that, and their career choice may not even cover it, and they're constantly changing their degree while in college, which which tax on more debt. Uh, I've seen people uh, that I went to school with follow their friends who got scholarships, but they didn't have a scholarship and they had to pay that insane amount of tuition because they just wanted to be with their friend in school. You know, these are just irrational decisions that people really have to think before they just drown themselves in all this debt because that debt, as we as you said, will be with you for the rest of your life. Um, the home price. in the case of student in the case of student loans. Sorry to cut you off. The case of student loans, for the most part, most of student loans you can't even charge off during bankruptcy. So that's literally going to be with you for the rest of your life. I mean, you see, right now everybody's crying about, uh, you know, will will they or won't they get the student loan forgiveness for twenty thousand? Um, and. It's one point seven trillion dollars in student loan debt in this country, and it's only going higher. And the fact that you, the point that you said of go where you can afford, it makes all the sense in the world. It's, I mean, me, I'm a strong proponent of while you in school, you work your way through school. 
I mean, I know parents, oh, I want my kid to have the college experience. No, the college experience ain't going to do nothing for them. It's going to delay how long it take them to graduate. It's going to, you know, they're going to be jumping around from major to major to major to pay more money. And then last but not least, it's going to cost them overall. If they have a job and they working their way through and they see where their money is going, it will get them motivated to finish faster. It'll get them motivated to stay focused. And it will also get them to have less of a financial obligation to the school after they leave. Hopefully they work their way hard enough to school to pay it off. And then I'm a proponent of your freshman, you know, sophomore year, you go locally to a community, get your associate's degree. Then if you got to have that big name university, then only go for two years. But I mean, with room and board in these universities, it's $70,000, $80,000 a year. So just a four-year degree usually take five years because, you know, kids be fucking off and all that. That's almost, what, three, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000? And even so in... Take the, take the road less travel. Go ahead. And a lot of degrees, too. Like, it's, I don't know maybe if it's just this generation, uh, my generation, but <clears throat> the workforce is so different than school. You know, I didn't go the college route, so I can't say from experience, but I can say from watching how other kids that I know react or act in college, how they're partying, how all the stuff that they're talking about that offends them and stuff. Let's say for my positions and my position in logistics management, in a lot of companies that requires a college degree, I didn't go the college route. I worked my way up to that position. But being in that position, we've seen people that are like very intellectual intellectual but that can't stand being in the department because they get it, it's it's fast paced it's aggressive it's you know you're dealing with uh truckers that you know don't care about you if if you're a kid coming out of college and i already know from experience of being young myself how i was treated you and you know it's more than just having the education it's having the experience and knowing how to communicate and speak to people and how to put your foot down. But a lot of kids think that just a college degree is going to get them a successful career. But I've seen kids go into a career field and then they just can't handle work because it's too stressful. And that's the reality. Like, I would rather, if I had to restart all over, I'd rather go the same path I took and just work my way through it so I have all the experience rather than go to a college that just teaches me the basis of the job but not actually the environment that it's in yeah i i agree also i mean it's it's those things like that you have you know eight hundred dollars a month of car payments i mean some people for the most part paying thousand dollars a month for a car payment for depreciation a depreciating asset that's going to sit in your driveway or sit in the uh your work parking lot for most of the time but you have to go into that job you hate. And, and this is the thing. The more debt you tack on, the harder it is for you to move job. The more debt you tack on, the harder it is for you to move job. I mean, of course, you're going to try to stay in that same product company you hate, but you're going to try to move up the ladder. But it's hard for you to pivot from one company to the other. Why? Because you've always got a bill coming due. And you can't, you know, let it let it lapse. So it locks you in more the more debt you add on. It keeps you being at places that you hate to be because you, I mean, Dave Ramsey always say, you know, borrow a slave to the lender. And I love it. I mean, people hate it because, you know, it's in the Bible. But that's the truest thing ever. People don't work because they like to work. People work to pay off the debt that they paid for for stuff that they couldn't afford before. And that's why they work. I mean, you saw it right there. You saw it in COVID. So they said, oh, you ain't had to pay. You don't got to pay your rent. The government got it. Everybody just start quitting. Oh, I can just sit here and, you know, collect the check. Everybody just start quitting. They don't go to work because they like it. They go to work to pay these financial obligations that they decided to do. I mean, I'm not talking about 100% of the people are like that. But a lot of people don't like the job they're at. Then we and COVID, you saw exactly that. Oh, I ain't got to pay mortgage. I'm good. You know, they call it quiet quitting or 
uh, everybody staying at home and all this other stuff, you can't even get nobody to go back to the office. Cool. So it's not like they like the job. They just there to meet those financial obligations. And it's crazy. Yeah. With all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video.